Here we go again. Man United make decision on Eric Ten Hag's future following Crystal Palace debacle with FA Cup final weeks away. Eric Ten Hag is expected to be given the rest of the season to turn around Manchester United's fortunes, and that means he will be in charge for the FA Cup final against Manchester City on May 25th. The Dutch boss came under fire after their troubled season hit a new low on Monday night with a 4-0 defeat at Crystal Palace. However, United's stance has always been that there are no plans to remove the former Ajax coach before the end of the campaign. That remains unchanged despite the horror show at Selhurst Park. Their hopes of qualifying for Europe via the league are hanging by a thread with matches against Arsenal, Newcastle and Brighton to come. And then they have a daunting date with Pep Guardiola's men looming at Wembley later this month. Former United striker Michael Owen called for Ten Hag to go immediately, and former England boss Steve McLaren to take charge. But it is understood that new owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe does not plan to make any change at the top before the end of the campaign. Ten Hag has always asked to be judged when he has a full squad available, something which has not happened much this season. But their form has tailed off alarmingly, and they have now shipped 81 goals this season, the most in almost 50 years. Ten Hag said on Monday night, Absolutely, I am the right manager to turn things around. If the right players are available, then we have a good squad. But when we miss almost our entire backline, then we have problems. However, X3 Lions favorite Owen believes they have someone to take over already on the payroll in McLaren, instead of favorite Thomas Tuchel. Owen said, I know it will change in the summer, but it has to change now. There's too many big games. European football and a trophy to play for. They have a cup final, and they have a few important games that could mean European football next year or not. And at some point, you have to make a decision. I just wonder with so much at stake, even though it's only for four games, I wonder if the board have to try and do something here and now and be quite radical about it. Asked if appointing McLaren as caretaker boss until the end of the season is a possibility, Owen said, anything. There's no way Steve's fingerprints are anywhere near that team. He's a brilliant coach. And that team is not being coached at all. No way. And Steve McLaren is a top operator. I can only think there's other people coaching the first team and he's a bystander. On the other side, Manchester United have been handed a huge blow in their pursuit of Michael Olise. That's after Newcastle United entered the race for the star, with the Magpies prepared to pay Crystal Palace's 60 millions of pounds, asking price for the winger according to reports. Olise showed exactly why United have been after him last night scoring a brace as Palace dispatched United 4 Nero. United part owners Ineos have reportedly been tracking Olise, with Sir Jim Ratcliffe thought to be a fan of the player. But the Daily Mail report that any United interest may now be scuppered by Newcastle entering the race for Olise. Palace had to resist interest from Chelsea for Olise's signature last season, but he ultimately signed a new contract with the Eagles. Olise has made it clear that he would like to leave for a Champions League side, but Newcastle hope their late push for Europa League football will be enough to entice Olise to swap South London for the North East. Meanwhile, Manchester United reached new nodder as Casemiro, Hodgland and Ten Hag humiliated by Crystal Palace. Manchester United spent an entire game of football either preparing to give the ball away or failing to defend once they had. That was the worst of the worst. Wherever and whenever Crystal Palace fancied attacking, they were allowed to by a team lacking fight, skill, energy, and any cohesion whatsoever. All the home side needed was a little bit of quality in attack, which hasn't been hard to come by under Oliver Glasner, and was duly provided by Michael Olise, Jean-Philippe Mateta, and Eberechi Easy to condemn Manchester United to yet another Premier League defeat and leave us wondering whether there are any redeemable features in a Red Devils team without Bruno Fernandes. Olise is a brilliant footballer who has drawn interest from the Premier League elite and United this season for good reason. And one would think that a goal involving him picking the ball up on the halfway line would require him to be at that brilliant best, but he will have scored more difficult tap-ins. This is the first time in history that United have lost 13 games in a Premier League season and they've conceded more goals, 81, than in any season since 1976-77. That was awful. They are awful. Ten Hag is a dead man walking and most of those players should follow him out of the Old Trafford exit this summer. 
on the other side. Owen tells Man United to sack Ten Hag as Scholes claims it's the final nail in the coffin for Dutchman. Michael Owen reckons Man United need to sack Eric Ten Hag as he's not the right man for the job after their 4-0 defeat to Crystal Palace on Monday night. The Red Devils suffered their heaviest loss of the campaign at Selhurst Park, with Michael Olis starring for Palace in a brilliant two-goal display. Jean-Philippe Mateta and Tyrick Mitchell were also on the score sheet for Oliver Glasner's men against Man United, with Ten Hag's side putting in a woeful display in South London. That result means Man United stay in 8th place in the Premier League, and could be set for their lowest ever Premier League finish, unless results improve in their final three matches. And now former Man United striker Owen thinks Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have to install a new manager at Old Trafford before the start of next season. I've said it for a long time that Ten Hag is not the right man for this job. I've been saying it for ages and ages, Owen told Premier League Productions. He cannot, simply cannot, manage the team next season. I almost wonder now, they've got a cup final, and they've got a few important games that could mean European football next year or not. At some point you've got to make a decision, they're going to get absolutely hammered by Manchester City in the FA Cup final, they're going to get annihilated. In fact, Arsenal will smash them to bits at Old Trafford, Newcastle will probably beat them, and I wouldn't even fancy them going to Brighton either. They might not get anything out of the rest of the season, playing like that. I just wonder there's just so much at stake, even if it's only for four games. I wonder whether the board might just have to try to do something here and now, and be quite radical about it. He cannot, simply cannot, manage this team next season. He's not good enough. I've thought it for ages, and he's just not good enough to manage Manchester United. Meanwhile, Man United legend Paul Scholes insists their embarrassing defeat to Crystal Palace felt like the final nail in the coffin for Ten Hag. Scholes added, It's been a difficult one. I know Michael's saying he's felt it for a long time, and the signs have been there that it's going to be difficult for him to do it next year. But tonight felt like the final nail in the coffin, really. There was a lack of know-how from the team, a lack of effort, which is the big disappointing thing. It felt like the end. If it is the end, I'm not sure what's out there at the minute. I've felt he might get another year and work for a club that has calmed down a little bit by the new owners, but it just doesn't feel like it now. Who was there to replace him? There wasn't really anybody. Now with Thomas Tuchel saying he's leaving Bayern Munich, I think that doesn't create a bigger problem for him because I think the problems are there anyway. It's quite plain to see it feels like borrowed time. Watching that performance tonight, sometimes you get those performances where you think, this is the end, that almost felt like it. I remember Ola Gunnar Solskjaer at Watford away. It felt very similar to me, it just fell at the end. But what do you do for the last four games? You've got a big cup final. You can't see where a win is coming from. They can't beat Burnley at home. 